Hey YouTubers, let's go ahead and revisit making porting templates for when you're working through your porting projects on your various cylinder heads. I've touched on this before, but I was just making a couple of new ones for myself. And I was like, well, let's go ahead and go through that process one more time. Uh, again, when you're doing your porting, and I've shared the porting math, where we're talking about, for example, on your intake throat, okay, because I've been corrected. I was using the wrong terminology for the wrong area of the port. So I want to try to be as consistent as possible with other porters and different books and magazines you can read. But when you're doing the transition from your actual valve seat into your port, so right where your valve seat meets the, you know, cast iron or for me, aluminum, because I only do aluminum heads now. That's called your throat, okay? I always just refer to it as bowl, like the whole thing as one th as a bowl, but apparently to be politically correct, that is considered a throat. So I shoot for, on, and I recommend others because it's a proven percentage to be a good performer is 89% of your intake valve diameter. So, you know, you would literally just take, let's say, right, uh, this is just a sacrificial two inch valve, but if you had a two inch intake valve and you just said two inch times 0.89, that would give you a percentage or a size for you to set your bowl to. Now, I highly recommend you sneak up on it. Don't try to just cut immediately to your max percentage because you want to have room to use your sanding rolls, clean up burr bites, burr marks. You know, you want to be able to smooth everything out and end up at your 89%. So, if, as an example, two inch valve times. 0.89 would be a 1.7800. Okay. Well, I have somehow managed to lose that 1.7800 uh, guy or template, but I wanted to show you. I have this one, which is a 1.775. Then it goes up to 1.785. So these are progressive uh, percentages. Okay, so if you think of uh, 1.78, this is slightly below 1.78. So if I were to do, let's say, let's say I did a little bit of rough cut, then I wanted to go to a medium cut where I'm kind of knocking down some of those rough, the rougher areas where I've been working. I'd use the 775, get it to clear in the in the throat. Caught myself, did you see me? So I'd get it to where it would clear, and then I could finalize it at the, either the one at 78 or I'd go to the 1785 to give me that little extra percentage to kind of help my flow. I'm not saying you guys can't do that as well. I'm just saying when you first start porting Try not to go much over 89% so you don't get yourself in trouble. Um, for me, on my like my Max Flow 225 port heads, I try to finish that throat at 1 800, which is a solid 90%. Now, this one is my most time invested template I've made. I mean, it is perfectly round. No variance in any part. And uh, I went ahead and polished the sides and whatnot. And I've made this one specifically. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before. But if you make these correctly with this squared off sharp edge. What you can do is you can color your valve seats with Dicom, Sharpie, whatever you have available put the valve in the head and either use a lapping tool or a drill on the other side to just kind of scribe if you for lack of a better term 
you could scribe in your template. And that's why I kept saying these things need to be as accurate as possible. So when you use this, which would basically be this edge, you'll literally scribe where you're going to be porting to in, in regards to that valve seat so you can stay away from your ceiling angles or any areas that are going to cause you a headache. Basically, all I do, I mean, this valve, I think, was a... I know it started out as a 194, probably a small block Chevy valve or something. Just had it in my toolbox. I thought, oh, I want to make a new template. But what you'll do is you'll just start out with a larger than your final size valve. What I do, see if you guys can see this. Let me check my, oh, check my, check my camera. But basically what I do, actually I don't want to take a chance on screwing that up. What I do is I just chuck this up in the drill. And then what we'll do is we'll move over here to the left to the bench grinder. Okay, hopefully you guys can see. Um, I used to use a different bench grinder, but I've just picked this one up recently at a yard sale. And I really like it better because it's more convenient. It's got a rough stone and a lot finer stone. So what I'll do, and I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to get in the way of the machine here, but I'll just run the drill. I use it on low speed just so it doesn't bounce as much, but I will turn on this bench grinder and I'll do my rough material removal here. Word of advice, move across the face of your grinding wheel because this valve is hard enough. You'll dig grooves in your grinding wheel. Then I'll come over to the smooth side, you know, take off more material, but um, not. I'm not trying to get the final anything at this point. We're just trying to use the coarse and the fine wheels to rough out the material that we're taking off the valve. Then what I'll do is I will chuck it up in my drill press tighten it but we'll give it a little snug so it don't fall out so what I do at this point is I will measure with my just you know vernier calipers or if you have a different style of caliper whatever measure where you're at see what you need to take off if you're still not within I'd say within a thousandths or less Go back to the drill and your grinding wheel or whatever you have available. But once I can get this down, and to, let's say one to two thousandths from the size I want, I literally take an angle grinder with just a thin fiber cutoff disc. And with the drill press running, I turn on the grinder. And here's the trick. You want to try to hold it 90 degrees and just work that edge little by little, you know, in nice, smooth, consistent uh, grinding. Then once you get it close enough, I will take just a, just a flat file and just let it run. You know, I don't know if you guys need to see that, but you know, just use your file to knock off anything that was left after you've done your wheels and your uh, grinder, then with it running, I just take a green scotch Sprite pad and just kind of take the, you know, and if you have any kind of burrs on the top edge, bottom edge while it's running, just use your flat file and just kind of knock off any kind of sharp edges or an unwanted profile, polish it up with this, of course, measure it measure it because you want to sneak up on your final size because of course if you cut too far you get to start over that's always fun so let's move back over to the bench so it's just kind of neat to have these tools to help out and uh, increase your consistency i don't know if you guys will be able to see that written on there 
I've got it written in Sharpie, one inch, 800 thousandths on the face. And I will tell you, as this thing collects dust sitting up above my porting bench, I really need to step up to a paint pen. Note to self, buy a paint pen. But that 1800 represents a true 90% throat on a two inch head, two inch valve head. And like I said, this what's 785, 1.785. If you ever want to know the percentage, all you got to do is take 1.785 divided by two, because that's the valves that most of you, that's 89 and a quarter percent. So you know what I mean? There's not much difference between a 780 and a 785. And I, like I said, I, I don't know, could be on the floor underneath the bench, but that 780, which represents a true straight across 89%, should be part of your tool kit when you go and do your uh, porting. I'm really kind of happy with this one. Just made it today. And I mean, it came out dead on dead on 1-800 I'm really happy with that so anyway I just want to do a real quick video kind of reviewing how I do these uh, templates and of course I, the same theory same everything applies to your exhaust uh, where are we here we are didn't even think about bringing that up like here's a 1.33 it's actually like a 1.332 template and the final normally i believe the final on those exhaust throats i want to say is 1.34 and now it's actually a little bit bigger than that because a 1.34 this is a 1.332 which is my initial like rough medium cut uh template uh 134 is an 86 almost 86 and a half percent and i'd like to see those exhaust throats at least 87 86 to 87 87 i think flows a little bit better and gives you a little bit better blend into that uh bowl area so anyway don't want to bore you with too many details and some people like math and numbers and some people don't so appreciate you guys watching Hopefully, I'll be able to get some more videos up. I'm trying to get two or three up this week, but there's so much editing that I'm not familiar with. I'm trying to uh, share my flow sheets and my flow data from having cylinder heads flowed and trying to switch it over from a paper, just a piece of paper that I received from uh, Clark Riddle's uh, flow bench. I want to put it into like an Excel spreadsheet type deal so that I can digit make it digital and make it easier to put into the videos for you guys to see. So, But I am years removed from that kind of work. So I apologize for being so slow. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please uh, ask any questions so I know what you guys are thinking, what you're needing, or what you're wanting. And I can use that to make future videos. Thanks again.